Good morning, it's Tuesday, July 9th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Legacy of Leprosy, in our scripture, 2 Kings, chapter 5. Go in peace, Elisha said. So Naaman started home again, but Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, My master should not have let this Aramean get away without accepting any of his gifts. As surely as the Lord lives, I will chase after him and get something from him. So Gehazi set off after Naaman. When Naaman saw Gehazi running after him, he climbed down from his chariot and went to meet him. Is everything all right? Naaman asked. Yes, Gehazi said, but my master has sent me to tell you that two young prophets from the hill country of Ephraim have just arrived. He would like seventy-five pounds of silver and two sets of clothing to give to them. By all means, take twice as much silver, Naaman insisted. He gave him two sets of clothing, tied up the money in two bags, and sent two of his servants to carry the gifts for Gehazi. But when they arrived at the citadel, Gehazi took the gifts from the servants and sent the men back. Then he went and hid the gifts inside the house. When he went into his master, Elisha asked him, Where have you been, Gehazi? I haven't been anywhere, he replied. But Elisha asked him, Don't you realize that I was there in spirit when Naaman stepped down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to receive money and clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and cattle, and male and female servants? Because you have done this, you and your descendants will suffer from Naaman's leprosy forever. When Gehazi left the room, he was covered with leprosy. His skin was white as snow. Naaman, commander of the most powerful army in the world, awoke one day to discover that he had leprosy. He would have traded all of his power and wealth for a good doctor's report. And when he went to the prophet, he got just that. Jaundiced, sickly skin, covered in sores and scabs, bordering on rotting, was now smooth and clear. Naaman was overjoyed and wanted to shower the prophet with gifts of gold, silver, and a lavish wardrobe. Elisha refused, but Gehazi, his servant, couldn't resist. He went behind the prophet's back, running after Naaman, lying straight face to him, and managed to snag 150 pounds of silver for himself, worth about $36,000 in today's money. Gehazi hid the money, but the prophet knew all about it, and the tables turned very quickly. Well, the upshot of the story is incredible. Naaman, a heathen, hardened, military, political power broker who had every advantage except health, was willing to trade it all for relief from leprosy. He got the relief and became a worshiper of the Lord God. Gehazi, servant of Elisha, who had seen the prophet's connection with God as Elisha performed miracles and who had witnessed the might of Yahweh defeating the foes of Israel without so much as a skirmish, traded away his own health and that of his children and grandchildren, not to mention the possibility of passing along a good name, for some stolen bags of silver, just enough to make a good down payment on a funeral. The contrast of the two men is striking. Naaman was sickly and willing to give it all away for the blessing of God. Gehazi lived in the blessing of God and wanted what Naaman had. He got way more than he bargained for. For you today, Scripture says that contentment with godliness is itself great wealth. Like Gehazi, we always have a choice. We can be content and let our thoughts and lives dwell with God in His ways, or we can trade away our contentment for a little silver or gold and leave a leprous legacy. Should be a no-brainer for believers. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.